apart from it, the world's end being an absolutely amazing film, guys, absolutely fantastic. I mean, I, I, I loved it. It was just so refreshing to go to the movies and actually just kind of be entertained, 100% entertained from one the beginning to the end, you know? It was just fantastic. That doesn't that mean that personally doesn't happen for me much in in the movies anymore, and it was just great. It's just like it, what movies should be. But uh, that's all we need, Peter. You saying uh, that? I was. Um, <laughs> I mean, but I, I just sat there. You know, there was because people often say, you know, when you're a filmmaker, how do you get to enjoy other people's films? I goes, well, I just get to enjoy them like any other film. I mean, it's like you know, it doesn't change who you are. But I, I was sitting there thinking at times, God, this must have been a nightmare to shoot. <laughs> I was kind of, <laughs> and it did cross my mind a couple of times the night shoots and the fights. Uh, scenes and the setups and the yeah. complicated I mean it was like it can't have been easy and, and then you told me you did it in 12 weeks yeah you know, I can't I couldn't believe it yeah I, I can't quite believe it either actually it was like sort of because it actually was like I'm very pleased with the end result but it was the I felt like the toughest of the three mainly because you know it's a film that's all set in one night so obviously yeah you know nearly like sort of I don't know 30% of it is at night. So I yeah. think for the last yeah. like yeah. month, we did night shoots yeah, yeah, in yeah. November, December. Yeah. Minus nine. <laughs> minus, so minus nine, minus also ten. Direct, right. direct continuity for 12 yeah. weeks because it was all in the space of you know the same 12 yeah, hours. So. Yeah, yeah. I was so happy as well that I thought, because uh, originally when I ripped my cardigan off, of which I'm wearing one of them, yeah, right. in the beehive, <laughs> originally it was me ripping my shirt off. Oh, yeah. And I was meant to be topless for the second for half. For the rest of the, of the film. The rest of the film. And when we were out and it was minus ten, I thought, I'm so... Happy that I put my foot down and said, "Well, I just ripped the cardigan. That's kind of funny." <laughs> at least you had a shirt on at minus ten. Well, it's something. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Some of the scenes we were doing when, when we were driving in the car because the car has no windows, yeah, and it was minus twelve or something, speeding through the night. That there, there were wow. some pretty cold evenings, you know, out of shot yeah. of thermals and blankets and water bottles yeah. and yeah. Ice shouting at a runner, "Get some cardboard!" Yeah. <laughs> and then getting cardboard, and then between shots, me and Paddy and Simon and Ros would hold the cardboard up against the shattered windows to stop the wind stop whipping the wind through and then we'd pull them down and, yeah. and we'd shoot. It's all good fun. It, it, it's funny though, like, sort of doing, you know, like, it's, it's interesting doing a film that's all set in one night because everything about that shoot makes, it makes it so intense kind of focusing on, like, um, a shorter time period and it seems to, it felt absolutely exhausting making it but it seems to sort of, like, feed into um, the intensity on screen in a good way. Like, it's interesting, you know, you were saying, you were, Peter was asking me last night, um, you know, how did we do it in 12 weeks with all the fight scenes? And I said, well, you know, the, the trade-off is that to get to shoot, like, um, you know, four days on this fight, I have to take another dialogue scene that's an argument or something and do that in one day. That's like five mm. pages of dialogue. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's something that... Um, Mm. But I think that kind of helped in a way because then some of the dialogue mm. scenes that are also intense are done over a shorter period so you guys can really concentrate. It also helps enormously that, that the cast that we got, that we wanted, uh, are people that we, with the exception of Eddie, who Nick had worked with before, but mm. who we knew would fit straight in with that because he's such a professional, Eddie, he's an incredible actor, mm. that we had a kind of shorthand and a chemistry that was immediate and enabled us to do those sort of snappy dialogue bits uh, effectively because I think if we hadn't have been in sync with each other, it would have been impossible, you know. You can lose it as well, I think. If you, if you have a scene which is full of emotion and anger that then goes over two days, it's difficult to recapture that same feeling again, you know. Yeah. How many takes are you doing on those, some of those sorts of scenes, those dialogue scenes? Because they feel, I mean, it's a total tribute to you guys, they feel alive and spontaneous at the moment. Like, you know, are you a kind of, do you get to perfect that over several takes? I to that guy. Know? I mean, we tend to, oh, yeah. he t Edgar tends to move on when he's happy, and, yeah. and if, we, if one of us isn't with it, we'll say so, but usually yeah. like three or four, maybe, uh, uh, at least. Yeah, well, yeah. Not, not, not many. I think that in some of the sort of the, the more like dramatic scenes, um, yeah, maybe, maybe we do less when it's really emotional, because mm. it's like, it's difficult to keep that kind of pitch going. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. the, the, tr the tricky thing about it is like, uh, is, uh, you know, you've got all these fight scenes and special effects, but then... Nearly every other scene is like what, you know, they call like a dinner table scene, <laughs> which um, as you know, I'm sure like in terms of like, you know, the council of like, uh, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. like an absolute nightmare of eye lines. Because yeah, right. it's something yeah. that like, it yeah. looks like an easy scene to shoot, but any like yeah. dinner table scene is like, you've got six people around a table, yeah. you've got like, then you, you need 
14 shots to cover the whole thing. Fortunately for us, we're all the same height. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Kevin, nightmare for you. We're and you, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in that movie that you, I mean, you know, you, 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 I, I would imagine you're going into some of those scenes, not obviously all of them, but some of them scenes knowing exactly where you're, where you're cutting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, there's head turns where you're cutting to an opposing angle right in that moment, all that. I mean, all of this. Do you, I mean, you, do you literally just shoot those moments and move, move on? You don't, is that... Uh, how a lot of the shooting's done, is it? Yeah, I think, yeah. you know, like, to try and you get know all what that... you want, you know the exact little bits that you're going to use. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes I'll tell the actor, I'll say, this shot is for this line. Sometimes if it's something yeah. where it's like, you know, you're doing the whole performance, is like, do the whole tape, but I'll sort of say to Simon, yeah. saying, this this shot is for this line only, so, yeah. like, make sure this is really that's good a, for that's that That's the only line that needs to be any good, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, so I think... <laughs> I yeah, think that's yeah. the th you know that's sometimes it's uh you know like um it, sometimes it's just the only way to get through it is that I, I think I think also because when we write the scripts we don't really kind of improv around it at all we rehearse rehearse the the script we add in lines from rehearsal but then we kind of keep tight to it and because like the scenes always have it's something we kind of learnt from doing TV is that to sort of like have come in late and finish early so it's always got like a start and an end. And so yeah, that way, the yeah. sort of just the transitions always like sort of work. It's like this is the first yes. line of the scene, and this yeah. is the last, and there's no yeah. extra argument at the end of the scene. Also, in impro tends to, if 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 people are working around a script and not just improvising flat out, the impro tends to happen either at the beginning or the end, which makes for transitions makes transitions quite difficult because yeah. they'll just sort of like keep going rather than yeah. So we we we're always very careful to have hard outs, you know. So um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, impro yeah, does yeah. happen, it will happen in the midst of it and be very slight. But we, we yeah. come to set with a script which is rigorously kind of planned out so that we so have those moments. Improvisations at the end of a scene can go on indefinitely because no other actor wants to let the other actor have the last word. Yeah. The also, last the word, it just goes thing. on forever. Yeah. No, I think you see, you see that in, like, especially in the, like, the American improv heavy comedies. Like basically, like all scenes end in an argument. Yeah, yeah. Because like, sort of, the, the the various improvisers are just kind of going and going and going until one of them has run out of steam. You know. Yeah. And so, what's your script writing process like? I mean, how do you guys work? It's, we, it's disciplined, isn't it? It's, we have yeah. a, we have a, we have a method which we've kind of refined over the years yeah. from Sean to here. Yeah. So that with this one, it was really it was kind of. Um, it felt easier in a way because we we went away. We, we came up with the initial idea, then we had a weekend away when we just brainstormed all the mythology of the movie. Right. And then we we hit the we, we, we start big in terms of the beats and the size, and then then specify and specify and specify until we're down to like punctuation. So like you start like with a treat with a treatment, a sort of scene breakdown. Yeah, yeah. Well, you start with the beat, and then you just refine it down. Exactly. And yeah, eventually, yeah. the dialogue's the last thing that kind of goes in. Basically, yeah, yeah. once you've got a shape, structure totally. and a shape. Yeah. Well, we, right. And also with this yeah. one as well, we had this thing where we had this big flip chart, but we also had the the, the pub crawl itself. So that actually became yes. like chapters in terms of yes. okay, we got twelve yeah. pubs. And this is going to happen in this one, and this yeah, is going to happen in yeah, this one. Yeah, so we yeah, knew, yeah. like, we like measured it out yeah, in terms yeah. of where we're going to get to. So, yeah. you know, even within the three act structure, we knew where, like, this is this is act one, these kind of up to this point, and then this is the second act, and this is the third act. But we, um, uh, yeah, so we had that kind of like plotted out, and then we knew, then and then we worked in like which characters are going to come in and out of it, like what's going to happen, and it, and we we and we then we tried once we had what the scene was. We tried to name the pub after what happens in the scene. So ah. we like the idea of the pub signs or the pub names being like tarot cards. Yeah. So both the name of the pub and even the artwork in the pub, um, you know, is is something that happens within the scene. Does it apply to the, to the famous cock? It does, yes. <laughs> because in the famous cock. <laughs> He is, he is, um, like, right. uh, you're still, bragging. I'm, they still know him because I've Yeah, been, from, I'm, from the incident. Of, so I'm... Yes, yes, exactly. It's like, he's, he's yes. the famous cock. Yeah, he's like, oh, look, he's, yes, like, right, he's, he's yes. barred, <laughs> so he's the famous cock. Don't let that guy in. He's barred for life. He is the famous cock. It's interesting. All, yeah, as the, if you look at all the artwork on each of the pub signs, yeah. They are very, very indicative of what happened. Even to the point of right. some of the characters inside the pub are on the pub sign. Yeah. Right, right, okay. And the, the, the yeah. arena tavern, which is uh, which is in the film The King's Head, um, have decided to keep 
the name, the King's Head, they're calling it the King's Head Tavern because the locals call it the Tav, so they wanted to keep the tavern. Mm. And the sign, which is actually me, is mm. staying right, at the pub. Yeah, so, fantastic. There you You're on a pub sign. Yeah. Does that mean free beer from the <laughs> point off? I don't drink anymore. This is the, this right. is the ironic thing. Right. It's like yeah, at the time yeah, when I could... Yeah. Hot Fuzz got us off so many parking tickets and speeding tickets. Oh, this really? pub could have this film, <laughs> this film could have got us so much free booze. Damn healthy lifestyle. It's not, it's not going to take long before somebody opens an At the World's End pub. Well, the, well, there's, I mean, I mean, that's going to happen, isn't it? Oh, well, there oh, are, yeah, there are a bunch they're... of them anyway. Oh, oh are there? Okay. All, all, yeah. of, all, of, the, all right. of the pub names in the film are all real. Right. And in some, some of them are quite commonplace. Like World's End is quite a commonplace oh, is it, is pub it, name. Is it? There's one in okay. Edinburgh. Okay. There's three right. in London. There's people keep sending us photos of ones right. around oh, the, wow. the country. Okay. Specifically, though, there's one in Camden Town, which we always right. used to meet oh, in. Yeah, I had right. my first date with my wife in. Right. So it's okay. funny. I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. Yeah, me and Maureen had our first date in the World's End. Right. I fell off the wagon in the World's, in the world's End. <laughs> <laughs> True. It's quite yeah, a significant yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. We used to. Right. We used to go to the when Simon and me used to live kind of in the same area of London. There was a cinema, the Od we're well, still there, the Odeon, Camden, uh, Camden Parkway, uh. and we used to go there because it was equidistant from our houses and see things like Run Lola Run and X Men. I remember specifically those two and meeting in. As I'll meet you in the World's End before, right. and it always used to strike right. me as a funny thing to say. I'll see, yeah. I'll see you in the World's End. I'll meet you at the World's End. Yeah. So. That's that sort of like that name always like stuck with me as like there's something there's something great about that name and so when we were writing the film there was no other title and like yeah, especially when we kind of like had to kind of like sort of lay claim to that title and you know make sure because yeah. obviously other other films have similar like, like <coughs> yeah. it has to be called the World's End there is no other title because that's the name of the yeah, bar yeah. Well, not, what's funny is that all, yeah. all of them are real pub names. Um, and most of them are quite commonplace ones. Obviously, there are things like the King's Head and the Mermaid are, are very commonplace. Uh. But then the famous cock, there's one, it's around the corner from my house in London. Ah. But there's only one. And I didn't realise that. I thought, oh, right. it must be like a, a well known right. one because yeah. like, that's yeah. the famous cock. It's on Highbury Corner. And it yeah. turns out there's only one. So then we had to get permission from them. Right. Because, like, you know, when it was only one, you had to get permission from that pub. We did end up right. in a pub on my stag do called The Cock. Do you remember in Belgium? Yes. Yeah. But the famous Belgium cock. cock. An There's ironic like, place for a bunch of guys to end up in on a stag night. Well, if you notice, in the, in the American trailer, they cut out the famous cock. Did they? It's yeah. considered rest thinking, but it's the name of a bar. I know. It's a cockerel. A cockerel, you know. yes. Well, they don't get that. <laughs> Do they have cockerels in the States, guys? They, they call them roosters. 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 The famous rooster. And so, when, I mean, when you guys finished Hot Fuzz, did you have the barest notion of what this one might be about? Well, I told like, this like, did you kind of have any sense, pubs, pub, even just the bearer's theme or anything? Did you? Well, this is absolutely true. Is that um, I told this story last night, but it's absolutely true. Is that um, when we were last in, when I was last in Wellington, actually, yeah. which is crazy, like six years ago, uh. is um, we had done the screening at the Embassy of Hot Furs, and we were flying back to Sydney, and um, I was sitting on the plane, and I, I had, uh, I think it was around the time that Superbad was about to come out. And I was thinking about that film, and uh, and that I had written a script when I was 21 called Crawl about teenagers on a pub crawl, and sort of teenagers right. illegally drinking right. and right. sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. something yeah. in a kind of American graffiti kind of vein. Mm. And uh, I was thinking about that film that I'd never done anything with it, and that I would probably never do anything with it. And then I was, then I thought, oh, what if that was just the start, and what if it was actually about the older guys trying to recreate it? And then at the baggage carousel in Sydney, I remember going up to you and saying, hey, I got an idea. I think this is like, so there's something in this. Mm. What if it was, um, I think you, you were vaguely aware of the script. And Nick had... Yeah, the were, thing I remember is, we la as we were landing in Sydney, you said, I have got, I've got a great idea. Uh, as we were landing, because I remember right. him saying it to me across the plane. And <laughs> yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah. Thing that, the thing that I remember, first of all, wasn't Crawl, which I knew about, because we discussed it a few yeah. times over the years was the idea of going back to where you're from, which we had kind of done with Hot Fuzz, yeah, yeah. and it being very, very different, and you having to come to terms with the fact that it's because you were different, not because the place was different. Sure, yeah. But the joke was, it was really different because it had been taken over by alien right, robots. Right. That was the kind of broad yeah. kind yeah. of yeah. idea. But it was, yeah, yeah, it was Edgar's crawl script that sort of sparked it. And in a weird way, like it had the other thing that like, line, you know, sort of tied in with Hot Fuzz was actually in the making of Hot Fuzz, I went back to my hometown. So that's my hometown. So there were elements of like, I, I'd been back a number of times over the years, but like, um, it's always a sort of a slightly strange and bittersweet 
you know, feeling like, you know, and you've been to, you came to visit us in Wales. In Wales, Samson, yeah. yeah. Which is sure a beautiful, yeah. beautiful, like, place. Yeah. Yeah. But you can imagine what it's like for me, having grown up there, and it be very sort of like rural and beautiful yeah, 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 to go yeah, yeah. come back and find a Starbucks there. And even right. though I got nothing yeah, yeah, against yeah, yeah. Starbucks coffee, it still looks really weird to be yes. like, oh, yeah. how did th- how did this happen? It feels yeah. like I'm at the end of Planet of the Apes, going, why? Because so yeah. you know it was established really quickly. Well, sorry, you know, just the actual the the fact the shop fitting it out probably occurred overnight as well. Yeah. You know, they're really yeah. good at just coming in and changing it. And wow, how did that get there? You know, just like it. Like it had landed, and that tied yeah, into our, yeah, 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 yeah. To the, that tied into the concept of the movie, as well, without giving too much away, um, in terms of what the the enemy was. This kind of, mm. this almost sort of corporate force, almost not like mm. a, yes, not like yep. a single planet. It, it's it's yes. like a. Well, I remember we in discussions on at Cali yeah. Manor, the first phrase we had was a sort of intergalactic Facebook. <laughs> wanted to take over, you know, yes, was, was yeah. gradually befriending, yeah, 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 yeah. but shaping well, planets. Yeah, yeah. I get it, it's funny. I, I, I sort of find like what kind of like, and I don't know if this is the same in, in New Zealand if you have it with bars and stuff, but that I, I get I get sort of like weirded out by the sort of homogenization of um, like sort of uh, architecture and graphics, particularly. Yeah. That when you start to go round as bars and pubs start to become more chainy, yeah, you find oh, yeah. that you have the oh, same yeah. signage and the same handwriting oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and that fake yeah. um, chalk handwriting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the budget on World's End is like less than double hot fuzz. Like it's slightly more than hot fuzz, but it's not yeah. double hot fuzz. Uh, but and it's you know on a much bigger scale in yeah, terms no, of no, it's and everything's on the screen. It looks fantastic. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it doesn't feel like. Uh, you, you know, I mean, it feels like a big film. It absolutely looks and feels like a big film. Well, what's nice about yeah. that in terms yeah. of like you, you know, Universal and working title have been good with this in terms of, especially with this is a, it's it's a yeah. very British film. There's no like we didn't have to kind of compromise by like having, you know, because some of the films are saying okay, you can have you can do this if you get an American actor in it. Sure, yeah, you know. Yeah. And oh, no. so we, we've we've yeah, been yeah, very lucky. You know, the bigger the budget, the more compromises you have to make. The more pressure there is. Yeah. But you know, yeah. our film's got no. Scotty and Bilbo in it, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nice making films uh, in the place where we make films. I, I, I've, yeah. you know, it's t- it was tough making the world's end in the UK for the weather and yeah. you know just this, where we are in the film industry. But it's nice yeah. to make films in your own space, you know, where you're yeah, comfortable, yeah. Where, yeah. where we yeah. feel most creative and most supportive. Absolutely, yeah. No, I feel the same way. We only finished the film like three weeks ago, yeah. and like sort of, it's funny. You start immediately doing press, and people say, um, "How do you feel now? You've done three movies," and yeah. and it sort of made me look back at the whole thing. And, and one of them that I I, I realize I'm very proud of is that, in a way, the, the the films that we I'm sure exactly the same films you grew up on of like the sort of mm. horror and sci-fi films that like were about something that were very rich in metaphor. In in a weird way, what we've done is like we've made essentially a zombie film, a cop film, and a sci-fi film. But mm-hmm. th- those genres are like a Trojan horse for us to make these relationship comedies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So we've kind of mm-hmm. snuck in, see. like, <laughs> yeah, 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 and, yeah, and yeah. especially yeah. with the new one, I think it's like you know it's probably yeah. the most, you know, like sort of I think obvious to anybody who watches it, the sort of most personal one in a way. No, the character, the characters in it are very rich, and, and that's what's great. I mean, it's a it's a it's a genre. It's got all this great genre stuff in it, but it's also got a, a, a story that really mean, means something well, i mean you, it does feel like you guys are collectively as a creative team you are you know you're you're, you're acknowledging that <laughs> that you're that that you um you know that those d- days are behind you to some degree which is sort of bittersweet yeah absolutely. but you're doing it in such a wonderfully uh, 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 just just an affectionate way everything that you loved about growing up in the childhood and movies is sort of in there and and it's sort of but and it, but at the same time you're saying but you know what things are different now we're not those people anymore. And also that I mean I you you read a lot of things where people kind of you you know so-called criticise like like something of, of, of having different tones in it. But I mean but that's real. It's life. Absolutely, it's exactly yeah. what happens to us every single day of our lives. Totally. Is there's different there's laughs and and, and, and and there's tension and and and, the, and there's you know there's there's sometimes sadness. It's like you just this is life. And and it's real. It's real. And you can't it's have not, one without the other. Each one, yeah, no. defi- you know, you can't it's have light without formula. shadow. It's not formula. Yeah. That's what it is. It just happens to be kind of a little bit better than formula. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, somebody, somebody said the other day, said, uh, "Oh, do you think this is the darkest of the three? And I said, "Well, he, Sean does shoot his mum in Shaun of the Dead, <laughs> so that's pretty dark." Yeah. So you know, I think there's sort of like you know, there's a dark chocolate. It's aspect the most grown-up one, I think. 
I think. But it's actually, both it, it should be. We are more silly, grown up. Well, you know, I mean, it is, uh, you know, the, the, the pressure on you guys was, must have been huge because after the hot fuzz, you must have so many people saying, oh, when, when's the next one coming out? When's the next one coming out? And I know that expectation where you haven't even made it yet. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and there's somehow people have elevated it already in <laughs> yeah. their minds and it's not even made. And, and, and yet you guys, you know, I mean, God, it's, you've delivered it. I mean, you really, if this is the third, this is the, this is the climactic movie in your Cornetto trilogy, it's, um, man, you just, you've served it up big time. Thank, Thank you, you. It's fantastic. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah, we're going to make that the closing statement. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice note to go out on. Thank you. Ever had one of those nights that starts out like any other, but ends up being the best night of your life? I did. Our goal that night was simple. 12 pubs, 12 pints. From the first post to the world's end. But that night, we never made it. I saw the boys the other day. <laughs> We're gonna go back to Newton Haven. Why? Five guys, 12 pubs, 50 pints. 60 pints. Oh, <laughs> steady on you, Alki. This is our chance to finally finish what we started. <laughs> we are gonna do the gold mile, and this time we are gonna see it through to the bitter end. Or lager end. Good evening, Raimondo. The prodigal son's return. Hi. What do you recommend? Beer. Mmm. One tap water. What? What the hell is this? Why are we even here? We are here to get annihilated. You come back and everything's sort of weird. I suggest you get on your way. It's not us that's changed. It's the town. We are going to get to the world's end if it kills us. Welcome home, boys. End. What do we do? Let's finish our drinks.